Yeah, uh, Boy Kills World is your your first full length feature. Uh, there's a lot of ideas in it. There's things like the calling and the video games, all that. W what got you started on this? What was like the first idea that made you think, okay, this can be a feature. I can make this. So uh, it was around 2016, and there were like four guys in Germany in Berlin, sort of being like a bit of frustrated over their day jobs uh, in like normal film, TV, and advertising. And we were like, oh, we really want to do something that we'd actually watch ourselves. And we had this uh, amazing friend called Dave Shatarsky, and he's an action director. And he's also a fantastic action performer. And we were like, all right, we're going to do something with him. And um, that's what we did. And we sort of started with, all oh, right, let's do a re revenge story. And... Uh, and then sort of the idea came about a deaf mute. And from there, we little little by little sort of, I think when we wrote the first script, we were like, oh, how do we make this special special? Like, how do we add a little spice to it? And that's when the idea came that we would use a young actor and have an old inner voice. Hmm. And back in the day, it was sort of a Marlboro man thing. And uh, we were like, oh, I got my inner voice from the this Mar Marlboro commercial more or less cigarette commercial and um this turned into a video game over the course of seven years mm. probably yeah. because of the sm smoking thing like <laughs> I'm not smoking gotcha yeah yeah um and and, and what 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 uh, made you think of uh, Bill Skarsgård to play this role and and how do you feel about a role where he literally doesn't have any lines he doesn't talk at all <laughs> <laughs> i mean that's uh how do i um, sort of the, the casting was literally in the beginning, you you sort of, you look at a few people and uh, Bill just sort of stuck out like, uh, oh, like super, the, the roles he had uh, in it and uh, that Tom Holland movie that I keep forgetting <laughs> titles mm -hmm. before the devil knows your, I don't know, great movie. Bill is amazing in it and he's a fantastic actor in that regard. And the only thing is sort of open was, uh, how do you feel about action, Bill? Like, uh, and he was like, oh, I, I would love to do action. I'll put in the work. I'll train my ass off. And uh, like, you really have to sort of commit a lot of time, not only to the training and getting in shape, that's one part, but you also have to... Uh, do all these choreographies right so you literally you you work twice as much on something as a as a regular actor because you just have to show up for for training every day and um let's do all these rehearsals uh that are just on the action plus the rehearsals for the regular shoot like the dramatic parts so it's just a lot of work and he basically being beginning when i first met him he wasn't like as buff as he became and he just made a, he promised me and I was like, all right, I'll believe you. And uh, then he delivered in a, in a most spectacular way. You mentioned that one of your collaborators, David, is, is also a fight uh, director, a fight, a stunt choreographer. Yeah, yeah, he, he is. Yeah, he worked on he worked on Boyka's World eventually. Like he did the action scenes. OK, so were you guys planning a lot of the action scenes, even as you were writing the script? Were you actually saying, OK, we need to like we were working some of that stuff out, and even before we had actors, yeah, yeah, and stuff? Ab ab absolutely. You sort of you start while you're writing the script. Uh, you already, I already started talking to Dave. Like, what can we do? What should we do? Um, is there something like? And then at one point, it was like, oh yeah, we're gonna have this kitchen fight scene, and I was like, I want to do a kitchen fight scenes because three of my f best friends are chefs. Hmm. So I was like, we we gotta do that, and he was like, yeah. All right, and then we're gonna use a cheese grater, and he just ran away from the Zoom call. He got to his kitchen and put the cheese grater over his arm, and I was like, "Yes, exactly, that's what we're gonna do." And then that was set, and that was sort of in the middle of of everything, really. Uh, like, I I guess the script was almost finished, but we were sort of still tweaking uh, the script on on the on the action stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's inter interesting because the movie is coming out at a time when there's a lot of apocalyptic thrillers there's a lot of revenge thrillers there seem to be very something in the air we're like what's what's going on that everyone's like thinking of the future being so dire where you have the culling and you have all these you know things going on i mean we we set it in a world that is uh very uh it's not our world it's not we sort of we didn't want to create a city that is sort of very specifically european or american or asian we sort of 
it was like, all right, we create our own world in it. And um, so that was, that was kind of important to me that we sort of create this whole thing around it. So we're not sort of con constricted by um, the reality. And actually, the movies are very funny, which is also something we don't normally see. Revenge thrillers aren't normally funny, but like you say, the cheese grater, great, great, great gag that you use a lot. There's a lot, of, a lot of stuff like that in the movie, which is just hilarious. Uh, was that very, very clear from the beginning that you had to have humor in this? It wasn't going to be very dead, deadly serious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a, um, I have a very like passion for for funny things, comedy, and uh, we. I mean, and also the, the concept itself, right? When you kind of like, all right, we got the a young guy and an old voice, and then you that just lends itself to comedy. Like that was the beginning. We always knew that it should have, like, it, in its core, dramatic and uh, and dark, but uh, surface level, funny and uh, entertaining. How, how did you come up with H. Ron Benjamin to do the voice of boy? Uh, and also, was it how did that work with? Uh, I mean, did you? I mean, obviously you have a script, but I mean, when they're on set shooting stuff, there's no, you know, he's not talking at all. So how, how does that work as far yeah. as you just do the scenes as if, you know, it's going in his head? Yeah, we, and... we, did, yeah, we had, we had Bill do the lines. Uh, we had, uh, um, because they were like, oh, like how Bill act them out should also inform how, how John Benjamin should do the lines. Like there was this whole like idea of merging this all into one and, uh, you got like the, from a technical point of view, it was literally saying the lines, acting them out, sort of timing it right, and then all right, this works. And then in the in the edit, you you do it again, basically. And then in the recording booth, you do it again. Hmm. And uh, then you go back into the editing and make it work. So somewhere there's a, there's a cut which has Bill saying all the lines somewhere uh yeah we oh, we actually well not 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 all the lines uh but we actually uh premiered a version where bill is doing the voiceover oh okay uh, in september oh, so sure. yeah okay um a moment. yeah what um how, how did sam Wimmy get involved also he's it's really kind of cool to see his name on this project is obviously a lot of people are going to be interested because of that uh did he <laughs> was he like did he get to get a script very early on or is he involved later Literally, when we, uh, I took the, in 2017, I took the uh, proof of concept trailer that we shot um, to LA. I slept on a couch. Um, I met a few people. And I think, I think like the fifth person I met was Sam. It was literally like, oh, you know, this guy. And then, and he called that guy. And uh, then somebody called Sam. And, um, uh, the, there was this moment where it's like where my uh he's now my manager but he's also producer on the movie uh he got it and he was like i'm gonna send this to sam and i was like oh amazing little email this is great and then two hours later uh he wrote me again i was like yeah sam sam saw the trailer he flipped i was like best day of my life fantastic and two days later we met and uh we uh uh, we went from there and then we had to develop a script and he was there from right from the beginning. Is that proof of concept trailer? Is that something you've ever released? It's ever been out there? Will it ever get released? Or I, is it... I think, I think it's out there. Yeah. Oh, okay. Interesting. I check it out. Uh, what about the casting? Cause it's such a, I mean, the, this, the characters in this movie is such an eclectic character characters, the cast. I mean, it's really amazing. I mean, it's really amazing. I mean, from, from Famke to, uh, uh, I mean, I want to ask about Andrew Koji cause I'm hoping to talk to him. He's really interesting, but how, how how do you go about casting all these characters? You have all these characters who do all these crazy things. I mean, what's how do you go about finding people? Like, who's the who was Bill the first person, and then other people? Or yeah, yeah, Bill was the first person uh, for for several reasons. Because you sort of when you kick off a project, you need the lead first in order to just yeah, this is something that we're doing here, like the, you just to sell the project basically to sell it to really to everybody else also uh to also the rest of the cast where you go like so this is what we're doing it's got bill in the lead and like uh and i think that was a big part played a big part in uh, how we got so many great people to to commit to this because we also shot on the other side of the world in cape town south africa which is a 30 hour fun ride from la and there are a lot of people who are like that's that's too much sorry you can't do that <laughs> Nah. So um, I was 
uh, when we sort of after Bill, when we sort of first started casting the 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 supporting roles, it was it was crazy because at that point I thought, well, uh, we'll probably get a, a two or three more known actors max uh, due to budgetary restraints, and then we would have to do a local casting or like get like people that are great but not as uh, famous and but we sort of the producers sort of kept like pushing it was like all right we need more we need we need better people and that's the perfect position to be in as a director when the producers go like oh we need we need uh, bigger names and we need uh, uh, better people and um, like the Andrew Koji was just sort of an amazing catch because uh, initially the role was way older, and I I love Andrew in uh, in in Warrior, mm. and I loved him in in Snake Eyes, but uh, <clears throat> like I thought that role would be twenty years older, mm. literally when, when we first sort of, and then he he auditioned for it and just blew me away, like he was basically auditioning when I first met him, I didn't even know he was already auditioning, like he sort of already performed as Basho to some degree when I just when we just just started talking and that was uh that was really great that's a great example him and uh him and him and uh Isaiah's character is very fu very yeah. funny duo bring a lot yeah. to those you know bring a lot of the comedy to the, those scenes for sure and there's yeah they these people are so funny like the Isaiah just kept uh, adding adding lines that he just thought of like ad-libbing and just like these super funny things it's like we had some funny written lines there but he just in the next take he would do something else because it didn't really matter and we had the we had the really hard task of finding the funniest ones that that he did and he did so many great ones and i mean i assume now because you shot in cape town that charlton copley was just around he's like the guy in south well, africa who, who was, you, you, would, <laughs> you would think that and i think for a moment there that the producers thought uh, th thought so too, but uh, no. Uh, Shaft is actually living in LA. In LA, oh, okay. gotcha. So. gotcha. <laughs> but he, but he stays at home. He could, he could stay at home or with his family when he goes out there to shoot. So it's yeah, really easier. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. He's he's yeah. He is at home there. But in that particular moment, it was like, no, no, no. He's coming in. He's uh, also got to travel, and uh, so yeah, that was that was funny because we basically thought he would be in town, but he wasn't. I want to go back to the action before we wrap up, because uh, I mean, it's the such such key scenes. I mean, are you doing a lot of previs, a lot of things like that, and a lot of things in advance? And just, I mean, how how are you guys developing the stuff even before going to the actors and bringing them in? Uh, you literally start from from scratch. You sort of, uh, uh, like I said, Dave, Dave Shatarsky did an amazing job on that, and I think the first previs we did like five years ago, mm -hmm. uh, back in the day, the the whole. Uh, we uh, like the whole culling sequence had it was also Christmas themed. Uh, so there's a fantastic previous out there uh, that is super violent and super fun uh, with uh, little Christmas elves instead of uh, mm -hmm. uh, little sailors. Uh, so that that changed. But that that previous is like yeah, five, six years old now. And we sort of did sort of start very early on because the action was such an important part of this that we uh, just kept on doing more and more and more and uh, adding to it and changing. And then the last previous was like, I think two weeks or three weeks before we started shooting. That's mm -hmm. when we did the previous. And at that point, I think already to some degree with the actors. So, um, yeah, they are involved in that stage, but very, very late. The previous is usually with the uh, stunt uh, stunt performers. Got it. Uh, so the movie's finally coming out on Friday after seven years, seven years of work. Um, any idea where you go from here? I mean, if you start thinking about the next next things, we started looking <clears throat> at scripts or anything like that, or Ex exactly looking at script, pitching scripts, pitching, uh, reading. Uh, it's all in it's all in motion. It's a really exciting time for me. I'm looking forward to uh get deeper into something but uh i'm not quite there yet like uh not ready to announce anything but uh it's it's getting there right. do you still do i stay in action comedy or do you feel like you want to do something completely different or no i'll i'll stay within that lane for now like uh at one point i might do something different i'm big like i love horror movies uh i love action movies i love basically most of the genres uh like sci-fi and fantasy and 
but uh, for now I'm sort of staying in that realm that I created for myself with Boyka's World.